Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're thrilled that you could be here as we share the program and property transformation with you. And, and this is a journey and we're gonna take you on uh, the, the journey that we've been on the last uh, 10 months and uh, where we are today. And uh, wanna act, give you an opportunity. We are recording tonight's presentation and we do wanna give you the opportunity to ask questions. So while we're going through the presentation, uh, feel free to drop those questions in the chat and we will uh, pick them up at the very end and answer all the questions you have. But if you want to capture those questions as we're going along, put them in the chat and we'll make sure we circle back to them when we get to the very end. But thank you again for joining us. My name is Wendy Shaw. I'm the Scout Executive for Longhorn Council, and it is truly a pleasure to share with you the vision that we have. Well, we just looked through earlier. Change the we are going to ask that you mute yourselves while we are doing the presentation so everyone can focus on the presentation. Here with Michael Kaywood. Uh, Michael Kaywood is our current uh, vice president of strategy, and he has been as a former council president and a former council commissioner. So Michael's done lots of worn lots of different hats in Longhorn Council and brings a great amount of experience and, and knowledge to uh, to this topic as well. So I want to share with you what, what it is exactly that we're talking about tonight. So I started just about a year ago as your scout executive. November 1st was my first day on the job. And early on in my days at the council had the had the opportunity to realize that we, we were ripe, we were primed for the opportunity to do a complete assessment, a complete overall king, comprehensive review of all of our properties and the programs that we do, uh, do at those properties. And so that out of that came a task force that focused on those very questions. What should be our strategic direction for our properties? What should be our vision? And we're gonna walk you through that process that that task force went through and where we are today. So with that, it is my pleasure to introduce Michael Kaywood and he's gonna start off the presentation tonight. Thank you, Michael. All right, thank you, Wendy, and good evening. Uh, I'm gonna spend some time talking to you about this journey, this path to uh, revitalizing and overhauling our outdoor program <clears throat> and our facilities. Kevin, if you'll help me with the charts, I'll advance here. All right. One more. I'm not seeing anything, Kevin. Help me, Kevin. Help me. There we go. All right. So <clears throat> the mission of the task force was to look at what we're doing. Um, Put that kind of aside and set our vision for the future. What are the possible uh, outcomes that we could create? Look at our current facilities and um, put them in the context of this, this future vision and then make some recommendations uh, so that we could accomplish this vision. Here are the members of the task force. Eric Honfeld was the chair. You'll see myself, uh, Jason Wright, Jim Riefel, Michelle Sanford, Christy Ryan, uh, are all volunteers who were part of the, the task force in phase one. Uh, Wendy Shaw and James Johnson and CeCe Bowden were the staff uh, assistants in this um, activity. And then we had Al and Pat Lambert of the Adventure Impact Advisors, Al being a former deputy scout executive at the national organization responsible for outdoor programs. So we had a wealth of experience coming to uh, this conversation of the task force. So let me step back a little bit and put in context how this task force looked at what we're doing in the Longhorn Council. First, we, we looked at performance. One of the things that stunned us was that for an extended period of time within the Longhorn Council, 85% of our units go to other, other council summer camps or other locations for summer, summer camp experiences. They don't come to our camps. We saw a rising competition that was very formidable. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a subsequent chart. We, as a Longhorn Council, do use our properties extensively for activities. And those activities could be as simple as uh, archery or BB guns, 
you know, activities like hay rides, but also some of the adventure activities, boating, uh, climbing, and those things. However, one of the things we noticed was that our facilities were in unacceptable condition. We didn't have a maintenance plan. In fact, we didn't even really fund within the council budget the upkeep and maintenance of our properties. And we had a few code violations um, that uh, caused us uh, some concern. In addition, while all that was going on, we recognized that our membership had declined quite significantly. We were over 20,000 members a number of years ago, and now we're down around 8,000 members. So on competition, where are scouts going? Well, Camp Strake, a $80 million investment down in the uh, Sam Houston Area Council was just recently opened. Uh, Z Base, an adventure base up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Kerr Scout Ranch, Ben de la Tour, Camp Alexander Peaceful Valley in Colorado, uh, as well as tre uh, Trevor, Trevor Reese Jones in Dallas, depending on what people are looking for. So you can see a, a, a diversity of reasons why our units go to other camps. It could be that it's new. It could be that it's low cost. It could be that it's cooler. Uh, it could be that um, they really want to get merit badges done and that's what that particular camp does. Or they maybe have a specific uh, activity they like to do, like uh, equestrian events. In the external market, outside of scouting, <clears throat> camping is exploding and it has been for a number of years. The interesting thing about it is that minority participation is actually leading that growth. And within that category, the Hispanics are the largest segment. We're seeing families flocking to the outdoors and into the right kinds of environments that we actually uh, have. What's interesting is this was happening before COVID and COVID just accelerated that. Now, what we're also recognizing is when they go into the outdoors, they're not necessarily going into the outdoors into the scouting model. They're actually going to the outdoors in a slightly different model. We're gonna talk a little bit about how we cast a vision to capture that market. Interesting part about the, the, the younger generation that's having kids and bringing them into scouting age is that they're favoring experiences. It's not just about going camping. It's about going camping with a bit of a purpose and a purpose that creates a multi-generational experience for their family. So we saw this as a potential um, entree into membership for the Longhorn Council. Today, our model is we go to schools, we have uh, rallies at the schools, and we bring in our membership. What this started to suggest to us, based on the way the demographics are wanting to go into the outdoors is maybe we give them a try before you buy, bring them into the outdoors, show them what scouting is all about, and then bring them into membership. Yeah, we have a number of properties that get within the Longhorn Council. As I mentioned, they have not necessarily been kept up uh, and, and therein lies a bit of a problem for us. I'm gonna show you some pictures as I go through uh, the next few, slides talking about Sid Richardson, Camp De Hoya, Worth Ranch, and Camp Hills and Hollows. And you'll see um, the state of our properties. Now, some of you have gone to all these properties. Some of you may not have been to but one or two of them, but you'll get a flavor for what our properties look like. So here's Sid Richardson Scout Ranch. Uh, it's 2,500 acres that we've had for a number of years. There's a lot of buildings on this structure. Uh, a lot of structures on, and buildings on this property. Uh, most of them are um, worn, as you can see in the pictures. But the thing that's really interesting about Sid Richardson that we often overlook is it has almost 20 miles of waterfront. And we don't necessarily use much of that waterfront, except maybe around the marina and a little bit around uh, the sailing base. And there's a lot of opportunity there uh, for us to explore and exploit uh, our waterfront at Sid Richardson. Camp Tahoya, 165 acres of land that we've had for a long, long time. Uh, 35 buildings and structures on its property. Uh, a lot of them in um, various stages of disrepair. And a few of them, um, if you haven't been to the camp lately, uh, are no longer there, that we've taken them down already because of the situation of those buildings. 
Worth Ranch, uh, 800 acres of land, had it since 1929, 40 buildings and structures on that property. Of all the camps, it's the one camp that does have this consistent theme uh, of, of architecture through it, uh, particularly as we've added new uh, buildings and structures to that property. But as you can tell from the pictures, uh, also some very worn buildings and structures. Camp Hills and Hollows up near Denton, 25 acres of land. Uh, uh, we acquired a number of years ago, four structures on that property. Uh, it's it's a in near in Denton. Uh, and, and I would say it was outside of Denton for a while, and now it's being subsumed by Denton. So there's a lot of uh, development that's going on around it, uh, but there's an opportunity for uh, an activity base there. So we cast a vision. I'll read this vision to you a little bit. I'll put some color commentary on it as I go. Uh, the Longford Council engages youth, adults, and families to create lifetime memories through amazing outdoor adventures. A unique array of transformational experiences guided by a world-class staff. Now, I'm gonna stop right there on that phrase, and I'm gonna ask you to think about the question. When you think about the staff of the Longhorn Council, do you think about world-class? And I'll just leave it there, and we'll, we'll, we'll move from there, because that's an important point I wanna come back to a little bit later. We'll push your personal boundaries while learning new skills, creating lifelong friendships and lasting memories. Growing leadership skills and character development will be core to all we do. That is the scouting program that we are all part of. That is a very, very important piece of this future vision. Our adventures are fun for the individual and for families, whether involved in the scouting program or not. And I'll stop there as well. We are actually suggesting in this vision that we bring people to our properties to have experiences that are, no, not, that are not at the time members of our program. Now, some of you may say that's sacrilegious. We don't do that. And yet today, we do bring people to our facilities that are not members. We don't do it in a necessarily intentional way, but certainly some of our events, like our orienteering events and some others, uh, have people that are not members. Our programs will excite the imagination, build confidence, and provide an energizing environment to learn. So this vision will actually come to life through three amazing venues. And I'll talk about each one of those. Uh, they are the Activities Hub, the Adventure Zone, and the Family Adventure Camp. The Activities Hub, as I mentioned, is really the core of what we've been doing in the Longhorn Council all along. We have a tremendous number of activities. In fact, we use our properties almost every weekend of the year to deliver activities, whether those activities are leadership and training that we might deliver through the Leadership Development and Training Academy, that being Wood Badge, Powder Horn, uh, NYLT, National Youth Leader Training. Uh, it could be something like uh, Commissioner College, those kinds of things. Training environments, uh, citizenship programs, the Scouting Support Center, where we actually deliver district and, and unit level activities. We do a lot of those kinds of things today. For instance, Camp Reefs. Environmental programs, nature and cons conservation, sustainability things. Skills Development Center. This is where your advancement in merit badges, for instance, would, would come in, but also other skills where you might bring in experts to demonstrate that skill. Outdoor Education Center, where we really start to focus on uh, youth and adults in the outdoors, teaching outdoor skills and think, well, that's what we do in scouting, exactly, but the, we do that for our members. So this is an opportunity through the Outdoor Education Center to bring non-members into the property and to teach them, maybe actually during the week. So reaching into homeschool networks, reaching into schools and providing an environment, delivering the same kinds of activities we deliver to ourselves on the weekends during the week uh, you know, for, for their uh, benefit. We're adding also this idea of a weekend center, the opportunity to start to change our properties so make them a little bit more accessible to those that may have disabilities. And the Longhorn Center for International Experiences, the idea that those that come from other countries might actually want to spend some time on our properties having experiences that they can't have in their home country. And if you'll help me with one. All right, the Adventure Zone. You will see a lot of very familiar uh, 
uh, experiences within the adventure zone, our aquatics programs, of course, Lake Bridgeport, certainly at, at uh, Worth Ranch, where we swim, we canoe, we kayak, we're at, talking about jet skis, we're talking about a water adventure park or splash zone, things like that. Climbing programs, whether they be towers or rock gardens, uh, we have a number of those already, and those would be part of the adventure zone. Uh, equestrian programs, we can and do have the property to do equestrian programs. We don't generally deliver them very often, uh, but that would be part of the adventure zone in the future. Uh, aerial sports, imagine having the longest zip line uh, in the state of Texas, or certainly on any scout property other than maybe the summit. Uh, canopy tours and challenge courses, we have those things today, uh, but uh, not necessarily um, in every location and to the extent that we might consider ourselves the biggest, the best, the longest. Uh, outdoor biking programs, showcasing mountain bike uh, trails and competition tracks, bringing in competitions uh, to use our facilities uh, to um, deliver a, a biking experience. Uh, ATV adventure program. So think about spending five nights out and about on Sid Richardson Scout Ranch using ATV, uh, an ATV as your method of travel. Uh, Chisholm Trail Adventure, as we have known it, has been pontoon based. Uh, we thought about the future adventure zone, uh, that that kind of activity uh, might rebrand itself into something that is a combination of packing, paddling, and maybe pontooning as well. And then shooting sports. Uh, we have shooting sports at most of our, our facilities. Uh, but we are building a brand new uh, competition level uh, sporting track and sporting clay facility at Sid Richardson Scout Ranch. And uh, we have the opportunity to make that accessible uh, to others uh, when we are not using it. And then a new element to this vision is the family adventure camp. And this is where we start to tap into the current demographics desire to get into the outdoors. What we're talking about here is uh, a multi-generational experience where people can come to our properties and be accommodated in the way they want to spend the night, whether that is bringing their RV or trailer, whether that is pitching a tent on the ground, whether that is in a green wall tent or in an adventure suite. So we're talking about a tent uh, that you might consider glamping but it would have a queen size bed and nightstands and would have an additional bunk room attached to it and maybe even an, a, a restroom uh, attached to it as well. Uh, it might be a cabin and cabins could be booked as well. Or it could be what you might consider an Ewok village, a you know, a tent experience that are hanging up in the trees. Um, all of those are part of what Family Adventure Camp looks like. But more importantly, what it really does is wrap the multi-generational experience around. So as the family comes, the family comes in a way that we can meet their needs for accommodation, regardless of their age. And what comes as part of this is something called the family concierge. And what this really is, is a fundamental shift in the way we deliver programs within the Longhorn Council. So the concierge service really looks like two major pieces. One, is a revitalized uh, experience, virtual experience, online experience, where you will go and register for your activity, your adventure experience, uh, your family adventure camp through this portal. Uh, that portal will track you all the way through the process um, and it will take care of all your registration and everything, all your, meet all your needs. In addition, the other big piece and probably the most important piece is the human experience that comes with it that once you register, you are now going to have someone, a concierge, who is gonna walk you through that process. You will be met at your camp uh, by people from the concierge service who will make sure that your needs are met. This is a level of customer experience that we're not accustomed to in the Longhorn Council and something that we will have to build as we go forward into the future, but is a key component for how we start to deliver this program, not only to our membership, but also to those that are not in our membership today. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Wendy so she can take you through the recommendations. Great, thank you very much for that, Michael. That sure was a lot of information and a lot to digest. All of 
what, what's happening in, in the camping world in general, uh, where we are with Longhorn Council, we have a huge opportunity uh, in front of us. And I, for one, and I know Michael is super excited about where this is gonna take us. So with all of that information, you're probably wondering, how do we get there? What is this gonna look like? So I'm, that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna talk you through what is this gonna look like? So let's talk through uh, how we're gonna uh, implement uh, this vision that Michael shared. So the first thing we need to do is align our outdoor program with these three venues. Now, been lots of, lots of great conversations in, in just the recent days and weeks. Um, and what we've come to, to realize is for us, the activity hub, the adventure zone and the family adventure camp are the way that we, we operationalize, we deliver it. But you as the customer and all the other scouting families that we serve, probably won't see an activity hub, won't see an adventure zone. What they'll see is the opportunity to do activities, troop camping, all the scouting things that we do now with the added element of, as Michael shared, this new family adventure camp. So don't be looking for signs that say, this is activity hub and this is where you are now. Don't think of it in terms of a place or a location. Think of it in terms of a way that we are organizing ourselves, all right? Very much from an operational standpoint and less about a location. So the next thing we need to do along those very same lines, which is item number two, is really make sure that what we are doing is financially sustainable. So we need to have business plans and make sure that each one of the venues are operated uh, fiscally sound. We don't want to start something that is not going to be financially sustainable long term. So we've got some couple of things that I'm going to be talking about during the rest of the presentation that will give you a feel for how do we make sure, how do we know for sure from a business standpoint that this, this concept, this vision is sustainable for the long term. So let's look at item number three. So as I said, Venue is not a location. It is, it is the way we operationalize the vision. But you're probably wondering what we're going to do at each of our properties. And that's what this slide talks about. So let's just jump in right away because I know this is what you're interested in. So Camp Tahoya will operate as a family adventure camp and an activity hub. It also, as the family adventure camp, it will be our demonstration site, our pilot site for family adventure camp. And I'll get to more details of that in just a little minute, in just a minute or so. Now Fort Worth, or I'm sorry, Fort Worth, Worth Branch will be an activity hub. And if you haven't noticed, you can already register for summer camp 2022. Uh, that's available on the council website. And so we, we intend on having summer camp and operating Worth Branch as uh, an activity hub. Now, as Michael mentioned, Sid Richardson is a huge property, lots of opportunity. So that Sid Richardson gives us the ability to offer all three venues on one property. With all that shoreline, with all that land, we have a lot of space to do a lot of different things. So Sid Richardson is, will be an activity hub, an adventure zone, and a family adventure camp. So one of the statistics that Michael shared is how many of our own Scouts BSA we camp at our summer camp. And that number that he shared is, is not last year's number. In fact, last year's number, or last year's, as last summer, so 2021, that number was even worse. 7.6% was how many Scouts BSA we camped at Worth Ranch in 2021. So that number is not getting better. It is getting worse. And that is not a new number. That is That number has been uh, true for up to a decade. So the task force really looked hard at that issue. What do we do about summer camp? How do we, and, and all the competition, we have so many things working against us. All the competition, that's not where our troops go now. How do we, where do we go? What direction should we have? So the task force 
has recommended that we pursue a customizable approach to summer camp. Your troops can decide on length of stay, what kind of programming, whether it be more adventure activities, whether it be more merit badge focused, you can create your own experience when you want to do it at what property you want to do it. That's the concept. So as I just mentioned, we, we will be doing traditional summer camp at Worth Ranch in 2022. We, our goal next summer is to be able to share with you what the opportunities are for 2023. So we're, we're not gonna, our deadline is, is next summer, June, July timeframe. We will communicate with you what the plan is for 2023. But our, our thinking, if we can get all the planning done, is that we wanna be able to offer, offer you a customizable experience, plan your own experience. We're not gonna hand you a leader's guide and tell you what, what the limitations of your summer program can be. We wanna offer you a summer experience that you can build, build your own summer experience. All right, the next thing, Kevin, if you can help me with the slide, is we're going to, and I'm still struggling here, Kevin, if you can help me out. Oh, well, there we go. Okay, on to number four. So as Michael mentioned, and as you could see from the pictures, if you haven't been to our properties recently, is that they are in poor condition. They have been neglected. So one of the key things that we have to do is implement that comprehensive maintenance plan. One of the things that happened last month is we brought a team, team in of people for a week from various backgrounds with different levels of expertise to evaluate Sid Richardson and all of its facilities from a maintenance plan standpoint. That team of people is building a maintenance plan for Sid. And based on that template, we're going to carry that over into Camp Tahoya and Worth Ranch. So we are already well on our way. And some of you, as, as uh, Michael mentioned, uh, if you've been to particularly Camp Tahoya, you'll know that we've, we've uh, had some demolition that's happened. So we are already on our way to improving the maintenance um, of our camps. We have a lot of work yet to do. We are just getting started, but know that this is a priority and, and it has been neglected. And we know that and it will be fixed. As I have shared with other groups that I've done this presentation to, as I have shared with the executive board of Longhorn Council, I did not create the situation that we were in with our properties, but it does end here. We, we will not, we, we will be proud of our facilities and the condition and the investment that we are making with them. So, on to number five, as Michael mentioned, we are re-looking re at all aspects of how we do customer service. We know that you as leaders have a very challenging job, a volunteer job at that, even trying to, to be a, do, do scouting for your scouts. We wanna make that as easy and as seamless as possible. So we are already behind the scenes making some very significant changes to the way we're doing business to ensure that we can provide you with a better experience, which enables you to give your scouts a better experience. So some of the things hopefully you've already maybe noticed. Uh, one thing, we've got a brand new phone system. My office line rings to my cell phone. You can get a hold of me at any time by calling my office line. Um, and you won't even know that I'm answering it from my cell phone. And the same goes for all the other, the field staff and the other management staff. Uh, another thing that's already in play is you have, if you haven't noticed the council calendar, we have an events on the calendar all the way through December of 2022. So the count, you know what we are planning through December of 2022. We also just rolled out uh, a week or two ago, the opportunity for your units your pack, your troop, your crew to reserve a spot at one of our camps through the online registration system. No more paper waiting for things to get approved. It is now an online system. And you will know that your reservation is locked in um, when you hit the button. So those are just a few examples 
of the work that we're doing to make sure to make sure that we are doing the best we can to help you provide scouting. And then the last item, again, it's that tie in between the maintenance plan and the business plan and, and the staffing and the operating budgets to make sure that, and very last word on this uh, slide that's so important is the marketing. Um, we, we know that we do a poor job of marketing the, the work that we are we do and, and what we provide. Uh, so that'll be a key piece to, to what we're looking at going forward. So let's, uh, I'm gonna to move to the next slide. This is one of my favorite slides because the first question everyone asks is, well, when, when is this gonna happen? This is not gonna be a simple overnight process. We are, excuse me, we are talking about multiple years. Um, we are, I don't have a specific timeline for when all of this will be done, uh, but know that um, we've, we've got a lot of work to do. But let's talk about first phase one, what Michael shared, the visioning, the facility awareness, and, and he didn't mention it, but I do want to comment that those, um, those pictures were taken when the task force visited every single property. Yes, the task force took four days, four days, and walked, drove, visited every single property um, that we have. So that way we had firsthand knowledge of exactly what the state of our facilities are in. So just a Tremendous kudos to the task force for their commitment in getting that done. And then of course the market analysis that, that Michael shared. But let's talk about phase two, because that's where we are right now. And, and the work that is happening right now as we speak. And I'm even gonna be able to give you some updates on some of the things that are on that list. So, cause phase two started back in June, all right? And there's a great word on that, uh, on that slide and it says funded. So, the important thing to know about phase two is that when we were um, making the plans for phase two, I put together a budget, figured out exactly what we would, well, not exactly, a, a good educated guess on what we were gonna need for phase two. And we went to the Boy Scout Foundation and that supports Longhorn Council. And we went to them with a proposal for, this is what we need and they have funded all of phase two. So the important thing for you to know is that we are not using operating dollars. We are not using your friends of scouting dollars. We're not using popcorn revenue. We're not using uh, camp fees. We are using donor funds to ensure that we can launch this effort. So let's talk more about what this specifically looks like. So phase two is all about planning and awareness. And I'm hoping you're dropping some great questions into the, into the chat, but I may not be able to answer all of them or Michael and I will do our best to answer them, but we are very much in the planning phase. So we may, we, we may not have answers because we are in the process of figuring, figuring things out. So planning and awareness. So the very first uh, item on that list is initiate stakeholder communication. Well, we're well past the initiate standpoint because this is presentation number 17. Yes, you are here tonight at the 17th time that we have done this presentation to, across um, everywhere from Camp De Hoya and Waco to Weatherford and Denton. So we have been all over the council doing this presentation to a variety of different um, scouting groups. And what has been so valuable in that process is getting your thoughts, getting your feedback, getting your input. And that has truly informed, truly informed the direction that we are now heading. So it has been incredibly valuable. But what, what you are experiencing tonight is, the, is kind of that tail end of, of that first phase of stakeholder communications. But we're not gonna stop now with that stakeholder communications. We're gonna pause. Because as I said, we're in that planning phase. So after the first of the year, we expect that we're gonna come back out to you and have updated presentations and updated communications about where are we now and, and what progress have we made? And are we gonna meet the timelines that I'm gonna talk about here real shortly? So stay tuned, because we're gonna keep you informed all the way through this process. Uh, the next item on the list are those business and operating plans that I mentioned. Um, the next, next thing we need to do is absolutely those master plans. 
we need to know exactly how our properties need to look to bring this vision to life. Setting the outdoor program standards is so critical because right now we don't meet, meet the baseline criteria for what our camps and properties should look like. So we need to set that standard and hold ourselves to that standard through our maintenance plans, through our new construction, and through all the work that the staff and the volunteers do at Longhorn Council. As Michael said, we need to design this concierge service. We don't have the pieces in place today, um, but we're, we are planning them. Uh, lots of meetings have already happened. We've got great people working on it, and I'm going to be real excited to share with you what that's going to look like for the future. So certainly plan sometime next spring. You're going to uh, likely get your fingers on exactly what are we talking about and what is that going to look like. Um, the next item on the list, hire additional staff. Well, that's actually should be past tense because uh, we have hired that staff. We added four positions, three out of the four have been hired and three out of the four have already started. Uh, we have one more uh, position to, to fill and that, that position is currently posted. So let's talk through those positions real quick. The first one is a second ranger at Camp Tahoya. Kenny Wines has uh, joined the team and in that role and has been in that role for several weeks, doing a fantastic job coming alongside Dennis and uh, really making sure that uh, Camp Tahoya is going to be ready for that family adventure camp lodge next June. Next, we have uh, Kevin Wasi, who has uh, has been a on staff with us since June, and he has uh, moved into the position of concierge services director. Uh, so yes, we think it is so important to have that customer service that we have created a position and we have filled that position, somebody who is gonna make sure that we provide you with a great experience as you are planning your scouting program. And then the third, third position is a um, major gifts uh, director. So if you've probably figured out, this is gonna cost us some money. So we are gonna launch a capital campaign and we do need somebody who can focus on that. That is always a major endeavor. It needs a great deal of uh, focus and attention. And so James Johnson uh, will be moved or has already moved into that role. And we have hired Dan Sullivan to replace him as our new director of development. And last but not least, the position that is still vacant is our family adventure camp director for Camp De Hoya. So we're excited to get that last, last position in place and then we'll have uh, uh, a full team when it comes to the pro program and property transformation. So marketing support, what's happening there? So we have hired a local Fort Worth marketing firm called Falcom. And just last week, we conducted, well, they, uh, the marketing firm conducted focus groups with non-members. So none of the people in the focus groups are currently scouts. We really wanted to hear from people who weren't scouts about what were they looking for in activities for their family and what, um, what would be, how do they make decisions about what kind of activities they do um, with their kids or sign their kids up for. So we're, we're waiting on the final report uh, after those focus groups. And then the next step in the process is going to be to build that marketing plan. So um, super excited to see those results and, and, and I was able to watch those focus groups and very informative. Uh, and I think it's gonna do a lot to in, uh, give us good direction in terms of how we, where we go with our, our marketing. So already next item on the list, the mark maintenance plans already uh, reference where we are with that piece of the puzzle. As I said, we had work done last month at SID and uh, we're well on our way to uh, building those plans and making sure that we, we stick to them. And then the, the pilot demo family adventure camp, uh, those plans are our beginning. A um, lot of work there yet to do. Uh, I will tell you that um, the tents that we are, um, uh, that you saw in the family adventure camp site that we, we have already ordered them because uh, they're coming to us from Australia. So don't have a lot to share yet, but that's where you're going to want to stay tuned so uh, you can hear more about exactly what Camp De Hoya is going to look like. 
um, as we launch that. And then I already mentioned the fundraising campaign, which is so is going to be so critical to the success of this project. So phase three, we anticipate that that's going to get kicked off uh, sometime mid next year, August timeframe. And that's really when we're going to dig into the issues of construction and build out and timelines and get a much better idea of um, the specific pieces and when they're going to happen. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of things happen. All right, so let's talk about that, that soft launch that uh, was referenced in that next June timeframe. So that at the activity hub, what's happening there is we are, as I mentioned, the council calendar has all of our council activities through December of next year. So we have and fully intend to continue the programming that we offer now throughout phase two and even into the beginning of phase three. But what we're doing in that process is evaluating those programs. We, we need as part of this process to ask you and your scouts, what do you want? Are we offering you the programs that, that you want? Are there other things that you're looking for that we should, should be offering? So that's all gonna be part of the, the soft launch process of the activity hub. We also need to look at the way our council committees are organized. What makes the most sense with this new operating model? How do we make sure that our the volunteer structure with our council committees line up and matches the, the structure that we are launching? And then of course, the concierge service and the customer service and, and the technology pieces of that and how that is all gonna get rolled out as part of the activity hub. And oh, by the way, as part of the adventure zone and part of the family adventure camp. So that piece of the concierge service and the technology is in a piece of all three venues that we are going to launch. So the Adventure Zone, as Michael mentioned, we have a brand new shooting sports uh, facility uh, planned for SID that's been in the works for quite a while. Um, and we, we are making progress and we hope to, to break ground soon, um, real soon or just it, I always say we're, we're just days away, but I'm, unfortunately working with the state is, uh, has had lots of hurdles, but we're getting there. I promise we're, we're getting there. We also need to design these new uh, adventure programs. If you have looked at the council calendar and our summer program offerings for next year, you will have noticed that we are not offering Chisholm Trail Adventure. We are equipment, particularly the pontoon boats for that um, program are are not in acceptable condition to have you, um, our customers, use them. So we are taking Chisholm Trail Adventure offline for the summer of 2022, so we can do just what you see on the screen, and that's design new adventure programs. Now, as Michael mentioned, we have a lot of shoreline, we have a lot of water, so are those adventures going to include aquatics and likely pontoon and sailing and all kinds of different watercraft? Yes, guarantee you um, that is going to be key to, to what they, they look like. But it's, it, it will definitely have components of Chisholm Trail Adventure, but we're going to make sure that um, we can deliver it. And we're targeting 2023, but stay tuned for, for details on that. And then Family Adventure Camp. Again, we're right in the thick of making those plans, but we are committed to making that June 2022 so you've probably been wondering, well, do you have any volunteers working on this part? It sounds like it's a lot of staff. Well, you're right. We do have staff working really um, extensively on all aspects of this um, process, but we do have a lot of volunteers and you'll see all of their names on the screen. And we are thrilled to have Michael K. Wood, uh, my co-presenter, as the chairman of phase two. And that, is, uh, that has just been fabulous. He's been giving tremendous leadership to the effort and we've got four subgroups. So one, stakeholder communications, making sure we keep you informed, making sure that we have a, a rhythm and a cadence to keep you um, informed about what's going on and where we are in the process. Then of course, the business strategy group, like I talked about, um, all of uh, the, the gentlemen in that group are, um, businessmen and, and folks who run their own businesses and, and are very knowledgeable 
um, about that aspect. And so we have pulled together the, the very best to make sure we have very solid business plans. The, the fundraising group, now don't get this group confused with the people who are asking for money. This is not the group that are asking for money, but they are going to make sure that we've got just the right message, just the right materials to talk to our donors about this process and about where we're going. So that's what that group is going to be focused on. And the last group, the pilot and demonstration site, that's the group that's going to uh, really have eyes on what we're doing at Camp De Hoya and, and make sure that we are keeping in line with the scouting values and making sure that what we are offering lines up with who we are as scouts. Because for some of you, some of this may sound like we are veering and moving away from scouting and who we are. And that is, couldn't be further from the truth. Um, I want, want you to know that this group, more than any of the other groups, is that is their focus, to make sure that what we are offering is an extension of scouting, is uh, adding to scouting and not um, something different. All right, and with that, we are going to open her up and I can't necessarily click on the next slide that says questions, but um, we can go into question mode. Can I just um, add to this one? Yes. As it's still up on the screen, mm -hmm. that we pick these volunteers not only for their skill, but also we looked at age, we looked at location. So oh, we yes. have people in the north part of the council, we have people in the south part of the council, uh, and we have some board members and some people that are not board members, some people that are new in their scouting journey, some people that have been in the scouting journey for many decades. Mm -hmm. So that we had a broad diversity of thought uh, bringing to bear on this uh, particular task force. Yeah, that's a great point, Michael. We uh, absolutely were very intentional about um, pulling together this, the, these groups of individuals. So one question that uh, we've got in the chat really is one that we've received many, many times. It's probably the first and foremost one, particularly when we talk about uh, bringing people who are not members on, onto our properties. As I mentioned when I was speaking, uh, we do have people that are not members of our uh, organization on our properties from time to time. Mm -hmm. But this more intentional and purposeful mm -hmm. focus on bringing people uh, to our properties with the idea of potentially bringing them into membership uh, brings this issue of YPT to the forefront. And uh, while we do have people on our properties today uh, that aren't necessarily YPT trained, this just further accentuates the need for a, a layered approach so that we can make sure that we have a safe environment for our membership and, mm -hmm. by the way, for those that come onto our property. So um, some of the things that we're thinking about, it hasn't been completely designed again, as Wendy indicated, we're planning. Uh, first and foremost is as they uh, are going through the registration process, they will then go through a short overview video, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, training program around YPT. Uh, when they come to the property, uh, if you've ever been to you know, a Disney property or something, you're on a bus, you're shuttling from one place to another, you're hearing or seeing something, well, guess what we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about YPT. Uh, we're going to be talking about safety of program and those same kinds of things. But in addition, we have some other mechanisms to help us, and that is separation geographically and separation by time. Uh, so, you know, days of the week. So we may have a lot of external people on our property during the week, mm -hmm. and we will have our membership on the property on the weekends. We may have our, you know, some of our uh, non-members on in Buchanan Springs when we have our members down in Camp Knot, for instance. So there's a number of ways that we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. It will be, uh, it is high on our list of things to make sure we work through. Another question. Oh, yeah. So what, one of the questions early in the chat was about um, uh, your comment, Michael, about um, families today are looking for experiences mm -hmm. and, and not necessarily um, the way we usually think about scouting or the way that um, um, we typically structure scouting. So I would... Um, and I, I don't think there was really a question per se. I think it was more of a, a comment. Um, but I think there's, 
there's some there's an important concept that we say a lot in scouting, and, and that's fun with a purpose. So our our the, the, the youth who experience scouting are having experiences. They, they may not realize that they are learning things or that they are um, gaining knowledge or that they're learning new skills. All they know is that they're having fun. So I would say the same about the families who come up, who participate in family adventure camp. Yes, they are looking for experiences, but what we are providing them is scouting that like for every other family is fun with a purpose. So we have no intention of getting away from the educational, the citizenship, the leadership. Um, and, and in fact, we, uh, the example that I like to use frequently is we have this great training to teach families how to camp. We call it balloon. If we were going to teach new families, maybe who are not members, how to camp if they wanted to camp, what curriculum might we use? I'm, I'm thinking we'd use Baloo. So we've got the tools. So some of it might just be how we package it. Rebranding it. Rebranding it. We probably won't call it Baloo, but could it be camping for beginners or new to camping or what, however we describe it, it will, um, be, it still is great training for those who need to know. And are they learning skills? Are they learning scouting? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are we doing scouting? Absolutely. Do we have other questions, Kevin? Yes, this is Larry. I know it shows Melinda up there, but this is Larry Grigger. Uh, Hi, Larry. <laughs> Long time no see. Uh, what adventures you talk about the family camping at Tahoya. Uh -huh. What adventures are you planning for these people to have when they get there to do? Well, much what we see today, uh, you can fish, you can shoot bows and arrows, you can shoot BB guns, you can shoot shotguns, you can shoot rifles. Mm -hmm. um, all those things are experiences they can have. You can get in a boat and go out on the lake. Uh, they can there's hike. a nature area. There's a nature area. There's yep. a lot there's of a things there's we a already pool. do. There's a pool. Mm -hmm. You could do scuba in the pool in the future state if we mm -hmm. wanted to offer that as an opportunity experience. Um, so there's lots of things that we already do today. All the things that you would be accustomed to seeing at Camp Tahoya uh, already will be the arsenal of things that we will do first. And then we will start to build in things as we get feedback from our members and non-members about what they see as experiences they'd like to have. Okay. Uh, based on just what you said there, how are you, how are you going to staff those? Because for like your shooting sports, you've got to have uh, a trained instructor mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. And, and for you for yeah. all the others, yeah. canoeing and boating and swimming and lifeguards and all that stuff. You're talking exactly. about a lot of staff there. Yes. And so we're not um, shortchanging any of those certifications or the need for that safety uh, in any of the delivery of the program. Uh, what we are having conversations about is what is the right mix of volunteers versus paid staff. Uh, we don't have the answer to that exactly yet. Clearly volunteers probably have other things to do during the week. So if that kind of activity was delivered during the week, we would have to have uh, you know, NRA certified instructors for shooting sports if we offered if we offered shooting sports during the week. Uh, but on weekends, um, a lot of our volunteer volunteers like to do that kind of thing and they would become part of the delivery of the program. So it'll be a com short answer, Larry, it'll be a combination of folks, both staff, uh, paid staff and volunteers and and likely full time staff and part time seasonal, all kinds of, uh, you know, maybe even college students doing internships from Baylor. So we're looking at a wide range of staffing options. A question on background checks relative to YPT and non-members. Yes. So uh, one of the things you may not be aware of is that the state of Texas uh, requires us to do background checks on any adult who is attending a 
um, they call it a licensed camp. Uh, and Texas defines a licensed camp as uh, more than um, 72 hours or three days, or it's, it's something in that I should know the exact language. But anyway, we do that currently. So every, um, every adult, whether they're registered with the Boy Scouts of America or not, if they are at a day camp, so we have a lot of parents who come to day camp, maybe either as walk-alongs or as visitors or whatever, all of those folks, um, as required by the state of Texas, do get a background check. And the same goes with summer camp. If you have a, uh, the BSA would not require a background check uh, as part of their registration if they're only there one night, but the state of Texas requires a background check if they only stay for um, that amount of time. So we, we fully intend to continue that process um, as, as we go forward with these other additional programs. Okay, another question. Uh, you're talking about the, the family adventure stuff, and yet we're gonna still, I'm assuming, use the camp for, uh, weekend camp and that for, for the scouts. So uh, how are we gonna kind of keep the two groups separated or are they just gonna start intermingling or what? <laughs> yeah, so first and foremost, we're gonna know who's on the property, obviously through the concierge service. We're gonna know that in advance. Uh, so we can make proper arrangements, put people in the right places to keep them separate if we need to. Uh, but we also uh, recognize the potential need for uh, a little bit more of a security situation. Right now, we, we have our rangers that kind of take care of their property, but they don't necessarily take care of the participants of the property. That's kind of up to us as, as unit leaders. Uh, in the future, we're probably going to have to have some sort of security to make sure that we don't have intermingling that's under Okay, kind of, kind of a little change on topic here, but to, still to haul you. Uh, how's the plans for the, the dining hall and health lodge coming along? Yeah, so we are actually doing a, I'm glad you asked that, Larry, because we're actually uh, in the process of doing a building inspection on the current dining hall. Um, as you, because one of the, one of the questions that we're trying to figure out is, uh, is, is it going to work to keep the current dining hall and either repurpose it? It is the structure itself um, able to be renovated. So right now, the um, dining, the current dining hall is being evaluated by a business, uh, uh, building inspector. The, the, new dining hall will be a dining facility and it will look very different than a typical dining hall. It will be, think food service, not so much everybody sits down and eats at the same time. So that, um, um, food service will look very different than it has in the past. But we think you'll find it even more appealing and, and uh, it will offer more variety and more options um, for our um, scouts and, and units than what we have had in the past. Uh, so I think it's a, um, actually, I think it's a really exciting, exciting change that we've got there. Yeah, and, and as we build up phase two, this demonstration site at La Jolla, we're all, already in sort of prep work for state phase three, which, you know, starts late next summer to look at not only uh, Camp La Jolla, but all the other camps, Sid Richardson, Worth Ranch, mm -hmm. and, and Hills and Hollows, and look at how we deliver this program more fully in all of those facilities. And as part of that conversation, it's looking at every structure on every property right. to determine whether or not it needs to be raised, whether or not it has the internal bones and structure to be just kind of cleaned up, uh, or whether we need to build new facilities on, on those properties as well. So part of the conversation that has yet to happen uh, Larry is, you know, with all the buildings that are there now, will they continue into the future? Will they get a new facade uh, or will they be taken down? We've obviously taken down a few things already and delivery of the health services on the property uh, obviously is part of the conversation that we have to have in phase two when we open up in June of next year. Uh, but we just won't deliver it in necessarily the building that was it was delivered in in the past. Agreed. 
next question comes from the chat and it asks about the balance between continuing being a character-based youth organization versus mm -hmm. entertainment venue. Obviously there's lots of places out there such as amusement parks, water parks, they're doing a lot of these entertainment things. So how do we kind of impact that market or be true to ourselves while also mm -hmm. providing opportunities? Yeah, great, great question. Um, certainly a very philosophical one. Uh, I think that we, um, as, as Michael mentioned during his section, uh, you know, that, that is what families are looking for today is experiences, um, things that they can put in the Shutterfly book, and if you know what that is, and, and things that they can post on their social media, and um, that, that is part of today's reality. So um, is there, do I believe that you can marry the two and provide great experiences that the family and that individual scouts will that will be transformative for the young people and for the family even as a family unit absolutely and and do we want to stay true to scouting absolutely but may we package it a di little bit differently yes I, I think we will um because I, again we want to we want to be who we are we want to be scouts but we need to look like it's 2022 not 1950. I would add that um, in the vision, and we don't have to go back to that vision statement, Kevin, but the vision um, right in the center of it is that the core of all of this delivery program is character and leadership development. Mm -hmm. It is the scouting program. And so while we may uh, appear to be competing with uh, venues that might be going into Lake Waco, for instance, and other places that are building water parks and introducing and some of the kind, same kinds of things. Uh, we won't necessarily be competing with them directly because we're actually adding this extra piece that's actually more critical and at the heart of our mission. And quite frankly, we think that's really where the families want to go. It's just not being delivered anywhere else. And that's why we think we've actually got a really good opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, and key, we haven't, I mean, Michael talked about as a membership entry point, and, and that's really how we see it. Um, our, our intention is that they, they try it at, as, as part of family adventure camp, most likely, but could be other ways. And they like it so, so much, and we continue to market to them that they then join. M many of you, uh, I mean, all you have to do is Google, you know, kitchen appliances. And before you know it, your Facebook feed is full of, you know, ads from, um, you know, Lowe's for appliances. That's just the way marketing happens today. And that's fully how we intend to, to market to folks who they, they come and try scouting through an entry point like Family Adventure Camp. And then did you have a great experience? Did you see scouting in action? Did you see what scouting can offer your family? Would you like to join a unit? Because it changes the conversation between Unfortunately, today, the conversation is a lot about families don't even know what scouting is today. And so giving them an opportunity to, as I say, try it before they buy it, we think is key to creating that membership entry point um, that is a different avenue. So it doesn't mean that we're changing what we're doing. We're just bringing them in differently than we have. Then and we're probably still going to do flyers and still do join nights and, and still do those recruiting activities as well. But this is another strategy for us to try to see if, how, how, does, how does that work? Does it work better? Does it create better retention? Does it, you know, what are the dynamics at play if they have an opportunity to try it? Could you expand a bit more on the Texas camp regulations for youth camps and how that's different from what would be expected from another commercial entertainment venue uh, and, and how we, and again, I'm not sure if you have the answer to that right now. Yeah, un unfortunately not. Um, if, if Kevin can um, um, check on who you are there, because I'm not looking at the screen that shows me who's asked the question. Um, happy to share that detail with you. I, I'm not an expert in that space. Our CC, our director of outdoor program is much more knowledgeable about the requirements that the state of Texas has uh, for um, camps that operate. 
happy to follow up with you on that one. Great questions, guys. Thank you for asking great questions. But I, we do want to be mindful of your time. And uh, we are um, certainly always available to answer any questions. And, and like I said, this isn't, this isn't the last you're going to hear about what uh, the transformation that we're that is underway. Uh, we'll be back with more information, but I can't thank you enough for joining us this evening and uh, hearing more about our program and property transformation. And thank you, Michael, uh, for being my co-presenter. And everybody, you have all have a great evening. Good night.